الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سیدنا و نبینا و مولانا اب القاسم محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وأمينك وصفيك وحبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك ومبلغ رسالاتك أفضل وأحسن وأجمل وأكمل وأزكى وأنما وأطيب وأطهر وأصنى وأكثر ما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحننت وسلمت على أحد من عبادك وأنبيائك ورسلك وصفوتك وأهل الكرامة عليك من خلقك صلوات Dear brothers and sisters in Iman, yesterday we had concluded the first portion of Dua Al-Iftitah, the beautiful Dua written and recommended by Imam of our age, Imam of our time, Imam Hadi Al-Mahdi alayhi salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. In first portion of dua, Imam alayhi salatu wa salam had praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mainly dua deals with hamd and shukr, tasbih, and tanzih. Imam alayhi salatu was salam was giving thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, expressing his gratitude on all the bounties and blessings which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given. In that portion when he has taught us that how to praise our Lord and how to praise our God and how to look at his bounties and blessings in our own self or in the universe. Now he is moving into the next portion which is the Salat and Salam. Imam alayhi salatu wa salam is now requesting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send his mercy and his rahmat and his blessings to the most beloved human being to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is our Nabi and our Rasul Muhammad al-Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And then Imam alayhi salatu wa salam refers to certain titles for the Prophet. When he names the Prophet, he uses those particular titles to introduce us that what is the status of the Prophet and who is the Prophet and what kind of position he enjoys. And then after that Imam والسلام, brings the list of uh, Ahlul Bayt والسلام, starting from Amirul Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salatu wassalam. Allahumma 
salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And then from Hazrat Sayyidah sallallahu alayha until Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. And mentioning the name of every Imam until himself. And he requests for salawat, requests for rahmat and mercy and blessings for all these 14 ma'asumin. Now, we need to understand the concept of this uh, salawat, which is, uh, is salam and it is blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, in Quran, in Surah Al-Ahzab, first time we came across with this, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. So in this particular verse of uh, Surah Al-Ahzab, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is first stating the fact that he and his angels, they send this salawat to the Prophet and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks the people of Iman, the group of Mu'mineen, that you also send salawat to the Prophet. So people came to the Prophet and they asked him, Ya Rasulullah, how should we send this salawat on you? Allah is saying he sends salawat on you. We don't hear that. Allah says that his uh, angels, they also send salawat to you. We don't have any contact with angels. We don't know how they send salawat to you. And then Allah is giving us duty that we have to send this salawat upon you. So how should we say this salawat to you? Then in the Shia and Sunni, both books of Tafsir under this ayat, it is written that the Prophet spoke to those people who were asking and he said, you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. This is the way that you have to say salawat to me. In certain other riwayat, we say that he at another time or maybe he told them that this is the way you send salawat and if you want to add upon it, then which is known as the Rood Ibrahimi, then you, you can add Kama Sallayta Wa Barakta Ala Ibrahima Wa Ali Ibrahim Inna Ka Hamidun Majid. So that is also a portion which can be added. We add that in our namaz e mayyit everybody knows that. And certain places here and there, that is also salawat. But maybe when you want to go into more detail, that's a detailed version. But because people have to say salawat day and night, time to time, over and over, again and again, so in order to make it easy for them, so this brief salawat, which was Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad, was introduced as a brief kind of version of salawat. So Prophet taught people and people learn it. And they started saying salawat. Now the question is, what is this salawat? What is the significance? What is the concept? Salawat, as it was asked from Imam Ja'far as sadiq alayhi salatu was salam, and he says, as salawat min Allah rahmatun, wa min al malaikati tazkiyatun, wa tazkiyatun nafs, wa min al mu'mineen dua. Imam says that this salawat when Allah sends salawat or you ask Allah 
to send salawat then from allah it means rahmat allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he shows his rahmat showers his rahmat upon the prophet and his all this is his salawat malaika what do malaika do when they send salawat malaika are not rahman or rahim or they are not authority of sending rahmat what malaika do they praise the prophet they praise the prophet and they acknowledge the high status of the prophet and his attributes whatever he has and deny all those uh, things which are the allegations by enemies brought against the prophet and angels they do tazkiya yani they all deny those things and they acknowledge the status of the prophet by praising the prophet it is praise and then when it comes from mu'minin then salawat means dua when you send salawat basically you are making a dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he should send his mercy upon muhammad o ali muhammad alayhi salatu was salam so basically salawat is a dua when it comes to us when it comes to allah this is mercy he is showering his mercy he is sending his mercy constantly he is showing his mercy upon the nabi and his all but then he wants to asks the mu'minin the muslim community and muslim umma to join allah and to join the malaika you see the status of salawat that in this action of sending salawat we join the ranks of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and malaika and do something what allah is doing and what malaika are doing and allah says you come and join me and you come and join my malaika when you say when you re- request the salawat basically you are joining allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and joining the malaika and then when you will request i am doing it anyhow i am doing it anyhow but when you will join actually you will get also the sawab of this beautiful action what i am doing it so i am doing it but now i am doing it at your request also you, you you get the sawab it is just like you are sending a request in simple language or in simple example sometime people call the flower shop and they ask them to send the flowers for example a bunch of flowers you want to send someone so you call the service you say this is their birthday or this is their anniversary and i want to send them some flowers so please can you if you have the credit if you have money you call them you place the order and at your behalf they send that the bunch of flowers or basket of flowers wherever you gave them the address it happens like that so now the person received that but there is a chit they want to see that who has sent it and then they say that it is sent by now your name and your address comes in so that makes the difference the allah subhanahu wa taala is sending it he is sending the salawat constantly to muhammad and ali muhammad because he says inna allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi so he is doing it anyhow but when you say allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ali muhammad now this salawat when he goes to muhammad wa ali muhammad so now there is a chit that this is on the request of brother so or so or sister so and so they have requested allah that you send salawat to muhammad wa ali muhammad alaihi wasallatu wasalam and it goes in your name allahumma salli ala muhammad and it goes in your name and that is our personal and current account with our prophet and with ahlul bayt that is our link that we remain in contact the line is active every day when we send this gift in our prayer we say 
in tashahud, in kunut, in sajda, in ruku, and in many other times when we say this salawat, actually it is going constantly to the Nabi and his Ahlul Bayt. This is a request which Allah is not going to deny, for sure. Meaning if Allah is not going to answer your any other dua, maybe there is a dua or there is anything, but the dua which Allah is never going to reject, that is this dua of the rood. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So this is 100% accepted dua because this is a dua which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. And then he asks us, Ya yuhalladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. So this is. <coughs> So, this is what are we doing? It is a dua. Sometime when you want to make dua and you don't know what dua you should make, at that lahza, at that moment, you become blank and you don't know what to ask. Just this salawat itself is a dua. Just this dua itself is a dua. Just you say salawat and then leave it. Whatever Allah knows that you have made a dua for Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So in response to that, whatever you need and whatever are your real needs, Allah will provide at his own. Because you have shown your respect. You have shown your respect for Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And you have made a dua for them. No, it is their duty to make dua for you. And they make dua for you. We, even when we receive flowers, we send the thank you, thank you note. So there is always some thank you note. And when this salawat is going daily, every day and night to Muhammad, do you think that they don't say, they don't say uh, thank you? They don't respond? So even if Allah says, they are not above Allah, Allah says that if you call me, I call you. Fadkuru ni adkurkum. If you remember me, I remember you. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad are not above Allah. If Allah feels the responsibility that if you remember me, I will remember you, then Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, who are the best servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they also feel the responsibility that when we make dua for them, they make dua for us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this person who is sending salawat daily and nightly upon us and every time he is making dua for us, O oh Allah, you also shower your mercy and blessings upon this person. So that is something which goes both ways, recite Islam. A person came to one of Masumin, and since I don't remember the exact name, which Imam was he, so I will not just guess. Uh, it's good to be to do ihtiyat, but I know for sure one of Masumin was asked. Somebody came and he said, "Mawla, Prophet doesn't need any any kind of." Uh, need of my dua for him. Meaning, Prophet is the best makhluk of Allah. And he is the most favorite one and the more favored one to the Allah. And Allah himself is doing all this for him. So why should I make a request and why should I go and make dua for the Prophet and uh, to request him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to send salawat or salam to him. And he is already, meaning he has everything. Whatever one can imagine, he has it. So, what else he can have? Everything has certain capacity to receive. And then after that, the capacity is full. So, what else? So, first of all, why should I make dua for the Prophet? If I request Prophet to make dua for me, it makes sense. But why should I make dua for the Prophet? It doesn't make sense to me. Then the other thing is, I don't think that my dua can increase anything for the Prophet. Prophet has it everything. So nothing can be now added. 
So Imam alayhi salatu was salam, they say that, uh, asked him to go and bring a big utensil, like a big ball. And he, brought, he asked him to bring that, which people were used to pour some water or carry some water. For five people, ten people, some big utensil. So you bring that one. And that utensil was brought. So he says, now you put it on your head. It was full of water. And then Imam asked certain other companions that now you go and bring some more water and pour in this one. And Imam asked him, actually him, that you should ask them to bring more water and put in this one. So the person asked them and the water, it was the utensil was full. And now when more people would bring water in it, so what would happen, the water would flow and the same person who was carrying it was getting soaked. The water was all now kind of uh, dripping on him. And when he saw that, Imam said, this is what happens with you. Meaning the capacity is full, now whatever you want to ask for the Prophet, Prophet doesn't need it. So what happens, it all comes down on you. So you are asking for Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad and they don't need it. So what happens, this salawat comes back upon you and your family. So don't think that it is giving anything to Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Basically, through Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, the mercy of Allah is coming back to you. So... <clears throat> So you are the one that who is getting the benefit. It is remembering Allah. It is a dua, first of all. And it is an act of dua. So you get reward. You, you show your willingness or your respect for Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So you get sawab for that. And then also it comes back to you because they don't need anything further. It is all coming to you. And then Imam wasalam, explained to him that actually the purpose of this is that there should be a cordial connection between the Prophet and between all those who take his name or who call themselves Muslim. Through Salawat, basically you are linked with your Prophet. And this link is link of respect and link of muhabbat and mawaddat. In Islam, there is no leadership, concept of leadership is not like a military concept of leadership that yes, you are, you are obeying the leader just because there is a rule and there is a protocol and you have to say, you have to kind of salute him as long as he is in service. But if you don't do that, then you will be punished. Actually, there is a relationship of love, aqidat, muhabbat, and respect. And that comes through salawat, and it gets expressed by salawat, and it gets increased by salawat. As we always take the name and bring the name of Prophet, and we send the salawat on him, it increases us in love for Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad it, it brings us closer to Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad So this is our link with our leadership. This is our way of respecting our leader. This is our way of expressing our love to the, our leader. And Islam wants to see that this connection of followers with their leader should be very strong, very connected, and very cordial, and very hearty. It shouldn't be just like a only for uh, on the paper or formality only in the form somewhere. Yes, we express that oh, we belong to this person or we follow that person or we are followers of him. No, we express that relation with that leader on daily basis, many time, many time, again and again, with love and respect. Where he doesn't remain only our leader, but he becomes our mahboob. He becomes our beloved. He becomes so beloved to us 
as we see in riwayat and ayat that he should be more beloved to us than our real father mother our son our daughter our brother our sister meaning nobody in this whole world should be more beloved in our eyes than the prophet muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam and his ahlul bayt there are riwayat of that nature that prophet spoke to his companions and he stressed the importance of uh, his love and his respect i was reading the other day this riwayat even in the books of our uh, ahlu sunnah brothers and uh, it was a riwayat which was narrated on behalf of uh, umar ibn khattab that prophet asked him umar how much you love me and he said ya rasulullah after myself i love you the most i apne baad yani if i love anybody the most you i don't love anybody more than you after myself so that is the riwayat and they say prophet replied and said ya umar that is not enough you have to love me more than what you love yourself and he say i i was not aware of that but now when you said this from no one from no one yes i will love you actually even more than myself so this is the concept which islam taught us that no one no one should be more beloved more mahboob in our heart then the prophet because we all are existing because of our prophet law laka lama khalaqtul aflaq if he was not going to create this prophet he was not going to create this kainat this duniya and then me and you none of us were created if we think we are because of our parents our parents were also not going to be created if the prophet was not going to create محمد مصطفى صلى الله عليه واله وسلم and even our parents didn't suffer for us for our better future we think our parents have really done a lot for us and they suffered a lot for us yes they did that but you compare the sufferings of prophet and then sufferings of our parents our prophet was beaten by stones and by swords and by spears lost his teeth left his town left his family left his business and lived what kind of life for those 23 years for what to save me and save you from the hell fire and to give us this gift of deen civilization akhlaq ethics manners to make us true human beings all this what we have today and we think we many time we don't trace the roots that if i am good muslim if i am good human being why i am a good muslim or why i am a good human being why i am a good father why i am a good mother why i am a good husband why i am a good member of the society trace back all these values you will go back to this nabi this rasul that who set the standards who started preaching and teaching humanity and akhlaq so today my brothers and sisters whatever we are it is because of those sufferings which prophet had gone through and then his ahlul bayt have gone through to carry on this legacy of the prophet message of the prophet and they suffered all of them they suffered and they were innocent people they were noble people they had no other meaning problem or people had no other problem with them other than that they were taking the stands to protect the legacy of the prophet and the mission of anbiya so sufferings of prophet sufferings of aima alaihi salatu wassalam and their contribution made for us deserves 
that we should love them, respect them, and express our love and our respect through sending salawat and salam upon them as much as possible. So recite one more salawat. قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى Reward or response, whatever we have. Prophet did his work and after 23 years, what did he ask? Only مَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَى Love. This love again is not going to add anything for the Prophet. But it will make us closer, alaykum as-salam, it will make us closer to the standard of humanity. The standard of akhlaq. When we will love Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, this love of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, if it is a meaningful love, if it is a true love, it will take us closer to the standard of humanity, the standard of akhlaq, the standard of taqwa, and it will definitely make us better human beings and better individuals. So that is the concept of this love, of this love and respect. So my point was that in Islam, only lip service is not enough. Only saying La ilaha illallah is not enough until we love Allah. Loving Allah is actually the objective. Saying La ilaha illallah just helps us to develop that love. In Quran, Allah says that mu'mineen love the most Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani most beloved in the eyes of mu'mineen is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So love of Allah makes us better Muslims. Love of Allah makes us to go through this experience of fasting or this experience of salat that in the middle of night we leave the warm bed and the comfort of bed and we leave the bed and go and make wudu. And then in the darkness of night, if we start praying Salatul Layl, what does make us that? That is only the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we are in that kind of love with Allah, that will make us to stand up in the middle of night and go for the nightly prayer. It is love of Allah which is going to make us to share our assets, share our hard-earned money, and what we love for ourselves with the needy, with the poor, with the orphan, with the widow, with the other members of the community or the society, only by saying La ilaha illallah is not going to make that. It is the love of Allah. That if we are in love, if the relationship with Allah is active, and if it is a relationship of love, then Islam becomes the kind of practical for us. And then Allah wants the same thing. He wants that only saying Muhammadun Rasulullah doesn't make you connected with Muhammad. It is that love of Muhammad. It is that respect of Muhammad. That you have utmost respect for the Prophet. That you name your son in his name. You name any of your projects in his name. When you come across with his name or with his mission or with his legacy, you show the respect. You have special genuine interest in the life of Prophet, in the mission of Prophet, in the legacy of Prophet, in the children of Prophet, in the family of Prophet. So that, that shows that you are connected with the Prophet or with the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salatu wasalam, the same thing. So it is issue of love. It is issue of respect. And then this love and respect will bring results back to ourself. Nothing will be added for the Prophet or Ahlul Bayt, but we will be the beneficiaries. So that is the concept, my brothers and sisters, for this salawat. And then there is a hadith from Imam Ja'far as-Sadiq alayhi salatu was salam, where he says that if one has committed big sins and is unable to pay the kafara for all those big sins and he, if he cannot do anything else 
then his duty is that he should say salawat as much as possible for him. This becomes the kafara for all those big sins and it makes you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the best zikr, sometimes people ask us, Maulana tell us the zikr, what zikr we should do. Any zikr with presence of heart is the best zikr. But there are certain azkar which are highly recommended. And one of them is this salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. But when we are saying it, we should have huzurul qalb. That we are talking to Allah. And we are requesting Allah that please you send some more mercy and more rahmat to the Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. If we know the meaning and when we are saying it, we, are, we know what we are saying. With that respect, if we are saying this, this is one of the best zikrs. La ilaha illallah. One of the best adhkar is la ilaha illallah. Say it as much as you can, whenever you have time. Sometime when we are driving, when we have some spare time, nothing, we are not doing anything important. So say, La ilaha illallah. Particularly when sometimes people say, oh, we have stress or anxiety or depression and we, are, we have very heavy heart. And sometimes you feel that you need something which, which gives you some relief, which, which makes things little light for you. Experience it. This is the best dhikr when you are under stress, when you have so much heavy burden of concerns at your heart or mind and say, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, and as much as you can. La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimeen. One of the best adhkar, particularly when you are down and you, you need to rise, you need to feel good, strong. So that is a dhikr. Or subhanallahi walhamdulillahi wa la ilaha illallah wallahu akbar. One of the best adhkar. These are the adhkar. But then again, sometime just say as much as you can say this tasbih of salawat. Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. Calling Allah, send his mercy upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad is one of the best zikr. And it makes us closer. The riwayat is that when we, if we do it on ongoing basis, it develops one kind of like line. You know, the heart line, some special line between us and between Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. It is a current account. And and sometime when then we are down, when we need help, so the help gets easier. And this is one of the way to remain in contact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the Prophet and with Ahlul Bayt. Darood, they call it Darood, they call it Salawat. So Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So this was uh, one thing what I wanted to stress upon. Tomorrow, inshallah, we will get into the titles which Imam wasalam, has used for the Prophet. He has used very special titles and he is telling us that saying only, yes, in prayer, in kalima, in many other places we say Muhammadun Abduhu wa Rasuluh, which is fine. Abd and Abdiyat and Risalat are the major uh, two things. But Muhammad is not only Abd and Muhammad is not only Rasul. Muhammad is Amin. Muhammad, Aminullah, Muhammad is Safiullah, Muhammad is Habibullah, Muhammad is Khayyaratu Khalqillah, Muhammad is Hafizu Sirrillah, Muhammad is Muballigu Risalatillah. So Muhammad is Bashir, Muhammad is Nadir, Muhammad is Rauf, Muhammad is Rahim. This Nabi has so many dimensions in his life. Don't take him light. Don't think he was just like anybody and his nubuvat came in lottery, for example. 
and Allah just picked randomly one person and made him Nabi. No, Muhammad was not made Nabi randomly. Or his Nubuvat didn't come in lottery. He was a very special man. He was created for this particular purpose, to be the ambassador of God to the humanity. A man with all these beautiful attributes. So Imam is outlining those. From tomorrow, inshallah, we'll get into that. And then, of course, we will talk about then why Imam wasalam, is using all those titles for himself also, which come in Dua Iftita. We will, inshallah, have a beautiful... We are now almost in the motion, uh, and the discussion is coming to a very interesting point. I hope that in coming one week, we will be concluding this Dua. In the last week of Ramadan, I will have some other series of lectures, but I want to conclude this Dua, inshallah, within a week. Before I finish, I just want to uh, acknowledge uh, the donation made, one of our senior members of community. You know that in this month of Ramadan, our community, our leadership here got into all this green business. Friendment, fr the environment friendly and they started saying that we shouldn't use the paper products and, and, and you know all that, what is happening every day. Our member of community who is a very generous has been always helping and supporting uh, from the very beginning until now. I remember when in 4B Plaza I had proposed a concept that we should get our texts and our books translated and we should have everything in English. I remember the first man who approached me in 4B Plaza. My memory is not weak. Anybody who has done anything for me or for Baitul Ilm, so I, I don't forget. So at that time in 4B Plaza, where the Baitul Ilm was not existing, it was still AIM. The first man who came and approached me, that was Taj Sayyid, that who came to me and he said, Maulana, how can we get all these books translated in English? And what can I do? So the same gentleman has been helping here and there through all these years. And finally, four or five days before, he came to me with the suggestion that, Maulana, you made everybody know to bring one cup, one plate, one fork, one this, everybody with him. It's a little difficult. And so the best thing is that if you allow me, then I can order the plates and the mugs and the spoons and the forks and everything like in restaurants the quality the chini and then you have it here and people don't have to bring anything so you have all these plates and everything here and we should use it so i discussed with the volunteers we agreed with the brother and he went ahead and he made the order it was 500 plates big plates 500 small plates, 500 mugs, and the spoons, and the forks, and all that. So, and then ordering, then coming and, and, and receiving it, and opening the boxes, and washing them, and putting them on the racks. That was a tons of work. Not only financial work that you're writing a check, but then doing all this work manually by himself. With the help of our very good Youth, Alhamdulillah, we are blessed with very good volunteers. I want to acknowledge all the youth, particularly these young sons of our lady scholar, Khanum Tayyiba Bukhari. I want to special, specially acknowledge them. They are the boys that, who never did anything for themselves at their home when they were in Pakistan. They had so many these servants at their home, and these poor boys are now just paying all the kaza here and they are now washing the dishes every night voluntarily. We didn't ask them, but they love it. So they are washing now the plates and they are doing all this work, standing outside in the, you have seen them in the parking lot, working there. Whenever you need the volunteers, these boys are standing up. Wherever you need them, they are there. So they came and they helped the Taj Sayyid and they opened the boxes, they received the boxes, they put all these things there. So inshallah from tomorrow night I believe we will have the plates and everything so you don't have to bring anything with you. So we will have mugs, we will have plates, we will have forks, we will have spoons. And thank you very much Taj, Taj Sayyid for looking into it, coming with this proposal. May Allah bless you for 
his marhumin and the all marhumin of his family please recite one surah fatiha